My name is Dr. Granny McCabe, and I'm a Special Professor and Primatologist here at the University of Calgary in Canada. Since 2008, I've been co-principal investigator of the Sanjay Mangavi Project in the Azugu Mountains of Tanzania, with Debbie Fernandez of Stony Brook University, New York, and Dr. Carolyn Ehart of the University of Texas at San Antonio. Our project focuses on the conservation and behavior of a rare and endangered monkey species known as the Sanjay Mangavi. Sanjay mangabees are found in East Africa, specifically in south-central Tanzania in the Udzungwa Mountains. This region is also known as the Galapagos of Africa due to the high level of biodiversity and endemism. The mangabees were first described by science in 1981. However, they were already known locally by the Tanzanians living in the Udzungwa region as Ngolaga. Sanjay mangabees live in relatively large groups with 30 to 75 individuals. They are female philopatric. This means females stay in the group in which they are born for their whole lives, while males leave to find a new group when they are ready to start mating. These males will transfer between groups multiple times throughout their lives. Males have a very distinctive long call. It's known as a whoop gobble. <coughs> This call is used to tell other groups where they are, which prevents aggressive encounters between groups and keeps their own group together. Sanjay mangabees are omnivorous. This means they'll eat pretty much anything. Their top food choices are juicy ripe fruits, fatty snails, and the hard dried seeds of a tall evergreen tree known as Paranari excelsa. Even though they have a flexible diet, with their large group sizes, they have to travel great distances each day just to get enough food to fill up the whole group. Therefore, it's critical that we work to protect their remaining habitat to ensure there is consistently enough high-quality food for this incredible species. Especially since our recent work has demonstrated that high-energy diets are critical for pregnant females to ensure the survival of their offspring during the first year of their lives. Our project follows the only group of mangabees that has been set aside for research, known as the Mizimu group. This group was habituated in 2004. And since 2008, we've been collecting data on the behavior, ecology, and demography of its now 73 members. So every two weeks, our research team camps up in the forested mountains and follows the group for five days in a row. We record the presence of all adult monkeys and any new infants that have been born. We also collect information on what foods are eaten, which parts of the forest they're using, and who's mating with whom. We'll use these data to gain a better understanding of how mangabees use their forest home and what resources are important for their survival and population growth. In 2000, a census was completed of the Udzungwa region to determine how large the mangabee population was and what types of habitat they lived in. It was determined that only 1,300 mangabees remain in the whole world, and all are found within two separate forest patches. These two forests are separated by a wide deforested area that is now farmland. As the mangabees live and find food only within the forest, they are unable to travel the large distance between the patches, effectively isolating the population into two subpopulations that cannot interbreed. This reduces the genetic diversity of the mangabee population as a whole. A further concern is that only one of the forests is actively protected within the Udzungwa Mountains National Park. The other, in the Udzungwa Scarp Forest Reserve, is threatened by hunting, illegal logging, and tree cutting for firewood, and further deforestation for agriculture. These active threats to the small remaining population of mangabees make it imperative that we find out as much as we can about the biology and needs of this species and use that information to make informed conservation plans for the protection of the monkeys and their habitat. So, how can you help? Well, it's not possible for us to be in Tanzania the whole year, so we have to leave our project in the very capable hands of the research assistants of the Sanjay Mangabe Project, Yahaya Sama and Bakari Panda, and our camp manager and cook, Babu Loi Loshoki. We are asking for your help to pay their monthly salaries as well as food and supplies from the local market. 
Our assistants have worked with us for over four years now, and not only are they incredibly hardworking and dedicated to the project, they also know each adult monkey individually and have helped us to identify and name each one. In a group with 33 adult monkeys that look very much alike, this is no easy task. Monthly expenses are 500 US dollars, so with your help, we hope to raise funds for at least three months of research, which will keep us going until we hear back from some larger grants that we've applied for. By supporting this project, you'll be playing a direct role in primate conservation in East Africa, and you'll be supporting the local economy in the Udzungu region. Even small contributions can make a really big difference. So my team, the monkeys, and I would like to say, Asanteni sana kwa kusaidia. Thank you very, very much for your support.